Today we're at Jackson High School, a school well known for its eccentric sports team and its well-renowned art department. And finally, its drug problem. Today we'll be going in and talking to some of the administrations and students to see what they know about the underbelly of the school. We're going in right now. Uh, hello, Mr. Turner. Uh, thank you for meeting us today. Yeah. Um, so obviously, this interview is about uh, is about drugs. Um, so I will start off with how long have you been a counselor? Um, I started working at Jackson in two thousand six. So this is in my eleventh year. Eleventh year. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, that's not an uncommon thing to to see in the office. Um, I think. And I, and I think that the biggest issue a lot of the times isn't necessarily that the student recognizes that it's a drug problem. Okay. Um, you know, grades start slipping, um, and the student typically has the, uh, has the response of, it's okay, I got a handle on it, everything's fine. Um, whereas I can kind of take a big, more, uh, bigger picture okay. and see this is where you were, this is where you are, and this is the trend that's happening. And when you're in it, in the middle of it, you are in a day-to-day -day type of thing, so you don't see the big changes from where you were and where you are. Okay. And a lot of time it's a, it's a process um, that happens over a period of you know months or years, um, whereas the student's vastly different than what they were in, you know before drugs. Right. So, uh, you, would you say like you're the reality check for the student? Uh, maybe. I think some students don't don't listen to me, you know, um, and don't, you know, when you deal with addictions and you deal with um, when you deal with things at this level, um, a lot of times the reality check from a lot there's a reality check from lots of different people from you know, potentially from friends, from parents if they know, from someone like me. But oftentimes when someone's in the middle of uh, battling an addiction, they, they're not ready to hear that, especially at this age, because, uh, because typically things haven't hit that rock bottom right. at this age, um, so they're not ready to accept it. They typically feel like they can manage things. Okay. There's a couple, a couple different processes that happen. If a student gets found with drugs or something on campus, there's a, there's a discipline piece that happens, right. um, and that happens with the principals. Right. Um, my relationship with the student isn't disciplinary. Right. You know, I'm there to help the student, support the student. When the student gets reintegrated back in school, we actually have a drug and alcohol counselor, Miss right. um, Lazan, and she is like the primary contact dealing with those drug and al okay. alcohol issues. Where I then come in is as a additional support piece and working with the teachers, um, you know, if they've missed a period of time, work with the teachers trying to figure out like, okay, what are the things that we can you know, do in the classroom to help that right. student be successful, knowing that they've missed a real big period of time. And then it's good to have a couple people in the school that kind of know what's going on. So if Miss Lazan's not available, I'm available right. to help support the student. Um, so it's kind of a two-tiered approach because oftentimes when a kid's dealing with the the stuff that the serious stuff that this brings up. Um, you know, as many trusted adults in the school environment that that student can have, the better. Okay. Typically, yes. Um, there are some very, very few students that can manage, um, and I definitely have worked with those students. Um, I still don't think, I think it's just a matter of time right. before something starts slipping away, but sometimes in high school they're able to manage, but generally speaking, yes. Okay. Um, there's correlations with depression, there's correlation with 
you know, with uh, attendance, and those directly relate to um, grades and performance at school. Um, you know, the real issue is when a student is um, using drugs and or alcohol, marijuana, whatever, they're typically using that to buffer some sort of okay. issue that they're having, you know, whether it's a poor home life or they have um, larger depression issues or anxiety or whatever. They typically have something else going on in their life and they're looking to drugs, alcohol, marijuana to help deal with it. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of, um, that's typically the, you know, the pattern, I right. guess. Um, so I guess for my final question, it would be, uh, do you think there's a drug problem at Jackson? Um, that's hard to say because I really, I really don't know, okay. to be honest with you. Um, you know, I meet with lots of kids, very few of them tell me that they, um, are, have issues with drug or alcohol. Right. I'm assuming that more do that don't tell me, obviously. Right. Um, so it's, it's really hard to say without the hard data, you know? Okay. And so I think, generally speaking, if there are drugs anywhere in the school, that's an issue, okay. right? But I don't think that it's a it's an issue more at Jackson than it is at like Glacier Peak okay. right. or Shorecrest or, you know, Cascade or whatever. Right. I think it's a general more societal issue um, and, and Jackson and other high schools are just a a representation of that, right. um, that it's something that goes on in our society. Okay. Um, well, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much for yeah. your time. No problem. How long have you been a drug counselor at Jackson? So I have been here 12, no, it will be 13 years. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you tell me about the process that you take as a a drug counselor uh, with the students, uh, getting them back on track and how you deal with that? Okay, so that's not an easy <laughs> question to answer uh, right. because it's it's different in right. different situations. So it really depends on where the student is at. Okay. Um, so first of all, not all the students that I work with have, have an issue with drugs okay. and alcohol, so I might be working with kids who have um, drugs and alcohol like in their family okay. um, and just kind of doing more prevention. Okay. Um, as far as just educating them okay. about the risks for them before before they ever start. So, um, but for kids who are currently using, um, so that could be any number of things. Um, first of all, I, I talk to them to just see if they're open okay. um, to talking about it. So sometimes kids won't feel comfortable right. um, talking about it at all. So there's very little I can do if, if, if they don't want to talk about it. Um, if they are open to looking at their use and actually want feedback, um, then we can work together. I do have a curriculum that I use um, quite often. It's called Teen Intervene. Okay. Um, and basically it's just looking at their use, um, what the pros and cons are, what, you know, what they're getting out of it, what, what the negatives, um, and then looking at um, you know, what are they ready to change something in that? What are their goals? Things like that. Okay. So, so that can look really, um, really different for different people. Okay. So, so I might work with somebody to, to quit, you know, um, I don't know, quit smoking marijuana, but they still want to drink or, um, you know, just different things like that, or maybe even just, uh, tobacco. So, um, it really depends on where the student is at and mm -hmm. what they want. Um, I don't have it. I don't have anything to do with discipline. Okay. So, um, and everything in here is totally confidential. As long as they're not under the influence at the very moment that I'm talking to them, you know, it it doesn't leave this room. So, okay. I don't. Um, I'll work with a student with wherever they're at, and sometimes it's just. Um, Harm, what I would call harm reduction, okay. if they're really not open to to talking about reducing or um, or stopping their use, then we might talk about things like, are you drinking and driving, or are you under the influence while you're driving, okay. or or getting in a car with somebody else, or are there are there harmful things that they're doing, like more risky behaviors, like. Um, 
binge drinking, mm -hmm. you know, if they're drinking more than a certain amount or more than so often, then they're more at risk. So we could talk about how, you know, they can cut back to, to not be quite at that risk level mm -hmm. if they're not open to stopping altogether. Mm -hmm. So there's no one answer. It's, okay. it's very different depending on where the student is at and, and what their goals are okay. and what they're having issues with. So, because we will send students out for help, you right. know, to go like for a drug or alcohol assessment right. and, um, and to follow that recommendation if they do right. get in trouble at school, which I totally believe in that process okay. as well. Because um, I don't do treatment right. per se, because I I don't have enough time with two thousand right. students right. to to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm more of a support role oh, okay. for the most part. Um, so I totally believe in sending kids out for that. But you're talking about police in particular like, and like criminal. Yeah, instead of like instead of having the school pr uh, press charges against the student, mm -hmm. um, would you say like like you appreciate the fact that they keep it within the school? I guess. So I'm so out of the loop uh, with that that I didn't even know that. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I don't even know if they, who gets okay. charged with things and who doesn't. Oh, okay. Like I'm totally out okay. of the loop with all of that. Unless a student tells okay. me that they were charged for something, I have no idea okay. who gets charged and who doesn't, or if they're not charging. Oh, okay. someone. I know that there's a big shift in, uh, especially with marijuana and them not being able to charge them for different things, okay. but um, yeah, okay. yeah, totally out of the loop there. I don't think there's any more of a drug problem at Jackson than any other okay. school. Um, so I think there's a drug problem anywhere where kids are doing drugs, okay. <laughs> okay. and that's in pretty much every school that we have. Um, and I think it's a direct reflection of the community that we live okay. in, you know, where people come into this school. Um, so yeah, I think I think there's a problem pretty much in all of our schools because right. there are kids that that do. There's a portion of students in every school okay. that have that are really having some, you know, serious issues with okay. drugs and alcohol. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, yeah. Thank you for meeting with us. And yeah, sure. agreeing to do this interview with us. Great. Yeah. Uh, so that was our interview with Ms. Lozon. She seemed like a great lady. Uh, she seems to really want to help the students, and she was very informative for us. So uh, thank you, Ms. Lozon. Uh, so we'll start off with how long have you been uh, in law enforcement? Uh, four years as of tomorrow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and then how long have you been a resource officer? Uh, year and a half. This is my second year. Year and a half? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then how much of your time is spent dealing with uh, drug issues at Jackson? If I had to give a percentage, um, I'd say probably about 40% of my time. 40% of your time? Um, and a lot of that is I'd actually be dealing with it more. Um, but low-level stuff like personal use marijuana okay um, I usually don't get too involved just because okay. that's more of a personal preference uh, but if, it, if I was getting involved with everything like with vape and stuff too it'd be most of my time okay um, and then so splitting up that 40% of your time is it more dealing with kids that are selling or using and in school most of the time it's using using okay. yeah um, we're constantly trying to find the people selling, but okay. most of the time we could we catch the users. Okay. Um, have you had problems with people selling on school grounds? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so then, obviously, you've had you've had to deal with kids while they have been under the influence at school. Mm -hmm. um, so then, what actions do you, as an officer, take uh, following when you find someone that has been using on school grounds? Um, so the most important thing is making sure they're okay first off because okay. I mean if they're on an opiate or something like right. that like um, got to make sure that they're safe first right. a lot of the times with personal use drugs um, I don't take legal action okay I let the school deal with that okay. because they get more help from the school than right. they would from me for me they're just gonna go into the system okay probably be kicked out with no real help Okay. Here, they're going to have to go do it through drug rehab, um, 
you know, and they're gonna they're gonna have to talk with our drug and alcohol um, right. specialists. So they're gonna be given some more help. Okay. Um, but for me, usually the thing is making sure that they're okay. Okay. Um, so I'll talk with them and everything, but beyond that, it's yeah, it's really just making sure they're not gonna OD on me or anything okay. like that. Right. Um, and then at what point do you involve involve the whole department and send the uh, the student through the system? Um, usually, um, if it's something besides marijuana, so if we're getting into any opiates, okay. um, so any, uh, you know, Oxycontin, Oxycodone, okay. um, heroin, obviously, if we start getting into cocaine or something like that, all, uh, you know, uh, all move forward with charges. Right. But a lot of times what we find here is, is marijuana. Okay, marijuana. Um, and I personally don't like throwing a kid into jail for... Right marijuana usage and if I did I like I said I'd be spending every day here right. dealing with that okay um, if there's any indication whatsoever that they're dealing um, I'll also do the same thing okay um, and then can you give me like so it's only are you're mainly finding marijuana use within the school there's not you haven't had any cases of hard drugs use well I mean yeah we have oh, okay. um, you know we've had ecstasy um, there is some cocaine going around right now, kind of um, Snohomish County wide cocaine right. making to come back, and we have some students here that have um, had some cocaine and stuff like that. Um, but we're we're not finding like heroin or meth or anything like that. Okay. Um, do you think that drug that drugs are a problem at Jackson currently? Absolutely. He was a great help with us today. Uh, I consumed my questions thoroughly, and he was honest about it. Uh, seems like a really great guy and very helpful and he really seems to have the students' minds at heart. Just believe me this dream. We'll start off with just the interview. Uh, we'll start the interview off with just uh, how long you've been working in the uh, Everett School District. Yeah. Okay, so this is my 20th year. 20th year? Yep. Um, how long have you been working uh, as a principal for Jackson? Uh, so this is my senior year as a principal, year okay. number four, and uh, I was an assistant principal here for six years. Okay. But I was also an assistant principal and athletic director at Cascade for three, okay. and I started off teaching at Cascade. So I've been at both schools for 10 years now. Okay. Um, so obviously this interview is about uh, the drugs that are at Jackson or that you've witnessed. Uh, so how much of your time would you say is spent dealing with drugs at Jackson? Uh, fortunately not a lot. Um, and uh, there were times in the past, uh, year, certain years, where we spent more time okay. uh, on it than now. But uh, so um, we, it's, it's, uh, Probably less than 20 times a year, I would say. Okay. Um, you know, kind of closer to the 10 mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so obviously you had to deal with kids under the influence um, at Jackson. Uh, what process do you take with them when you have discovered that they are either using or selling at Jackson? Okay. So those are two very different questions. Okay. So Sorry. if we no, it's um, if a student is in possession or under the influence um, or has. Um, paraphernalia with them, um, then it's a, um, so on paper it's going to be a 45 day suspension. Okay. If it's their first offense, we have, you know, we're, our goal is not to just hammer them academically, right. Right? If we're trying to change some behavioral things. If it's happening at school, by the time it starts happening at school, usually there's some kind of an issue going on. It's not likely that that's the very first time they ever tried it ever right. is at school. Right. It just doesn't seem to happen that way. Um, and so what we try to do is get the kids some help if that's what they need and so they can if they're agree if they agree to use, go through a drug and alcohol assessment and then follow all the recommendations that come from that okay. and we reduce the suspension down to five days for the first offense if there's ever a second offense it's 45 days um, if there's ever a third offense it's usually we start looking at other options for the student and we might even you know, head toward expulsion but now, if someone's selling drugs at school, it's an automatic expulsion from okay. school, which means they typically can't come back to Jackson. Right. Um, and maybe not another school in the Everett Public Schools. It depends on what the situation was, but, uh, but it's a much much bigger deal. Okay. Um, at what point do you involve the, the, police, uh, the police department? Yeah. So 
usually if it's once it becomes to that narcotic level um, something where it's a more significant criminal okay. offense um, so uh, you know usually drugs like cocaine or heroin or uh, you know uh, and sometimes even just prescription drugs that aren't prescribed to that student it could go to that level okay. um, things like that typically would involve the police or again if a student is selling drugs on campus or uh, alcohol or and, and the other thing though is sometimes people don't know it's even if they're just distributing it so I may have given it to you for free okay right but if I'm distributing it um, at all that's also uh, that's a okay. criminal, criminal offense to it at school uh, so what are some examples of drugs you have seen on campus um, pretty much uh, the gamut I mean over the years that I've been doing this you know so that stretches back a long time right. I don't see them every year you right. know but um, I just a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, so weed, would you say weed is one of the most common drugs that you find? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Marijuana is probably the probably the number one. Alcohol is sometimes too. Okay. So. Um, so I guess my final question is: Do you think there's a drug problem at Jackson? Uh, I. <laughs> it's an interesting. The way I want to answer, I think there's there's kids that have some problems with right. drugs, right? Um, I have, uh, so I've worked at another high, I've worked at Cascade right. too, right? My brother is an assistant principal at Glacier Peak, so we compare notes. My dad used to be an administrator in Mukilteo, so he worked, he was an appeal uh, appeal officer for Kamiak and Mariner. Yeah. So I mean, I've just kind of seen all around, and I think that there's, so if, if anyone was to ask the question, is there a drug problem? Do, I would, I think most principals would say yeah, right? because Every year, you've got you, you see issues drugs with across students all doing schools. Um, so the one thing that was really interesting to me, though, there was a few years ago where we had like seventy, somewhere in the seventies. That's how many suspensions we had for drugs and alcohol. Wow. Uh, and this was um, this was before I was principal here. Okay. Uh, it was there were a couple years in a row where it was really high, right? Okay. And um, but anyway, then when marijuana became legalized in Washington, we just thought, oh great, you know, it's going to go nuts. But it didn't. It actually went the reverse, which doesn't mean that people aren't using it more. I don't know, but there, I think it's happening more off campus okay. um, than uh, than it used to be. So I'm not sure exactly the reasons why. There's probably some psychology involved. It's probably similar to when you know uh, when when people can drink alcohol because now they just turn 21. Right. You know, once they kind of once it's okay to do it, like. People don't, uh, I don't know, they, they just... It's not the forbidden thing yeah, they want. Yeah, they, they don't go crazy with it so much, right? It's not like the same as when, you know, kids are partying in college or high school because they can't and it's this novelty thing, right? Like, once you can, I don't know, it takes a little, it, it just takes a little different shift. So maybe that's what happened is once marijuana became legalized, people, uh, it, it might have changed something, I don't know. Um, do you think drug use uh, affects a student's academic... Uh, I guess academic performance. Performance, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I would say for sure what we've seen is that uh, when people are using it on a regular basis, there's there's clearly issues that happen, and okay. it's not it, the academic part gets affected, but also you see different changes in their emotional right. state. Um, they're just they're much more edgy. They get angry a lot easier. Um, sometimes they get really anxious all the time. They start having relational issues with people. All that stuff ends up affecting their academics, right. in, in addition to you know some of that stuff that affects memory and all those things too. So yeah. That was our interview with Mr. Peters. He definitely seems like he has uh, the students' hearts at mind. Uh, he seems like a really nice guy. He answered my questions thoroughly. Um, seems like a great guy, and I'm glad that he's our principal. Stay.